we see here in front of me, it's a box. It's a small box, less than one cubic meter in size. But it's one of our answers to the COVID crisis. No, this box is not filled with vaccines, masks, disinfectant gel. There's even no, to no toilet paper in it. <laughs> this box is filled with board games. And we distributed these boxes to all our primary schools, to all our classes. And we offered the children to take these games at home and to play, to play with their parents, their siblings, their friends. Do you remember more than one year ago when this crisis began? Everything shut down around us. All our professional meetings, they were canceled. No more handshaking events like this we have tonight. All the kids' animation was closed. No football training, no ballet courses, nothing. And from one day to the other, we had plenty of time within the family. And for many of us, that was the best outcome of this crisis. Perhaps it was new and unusual, but it was, we profited really from that time. Before the COVID crisis, my youngest son came every weekend to me and asked me, Daddy, do you want to play a board game with me? And when I agreed, then he chose Monopoly. Every Sunday or every Saturday, he wanted to play Monopoly with me. And I asked myself, why does he want to play Monopoly with me? Does he perhaps want to become a real estate investor with a big car in front of his office and a lot of money in his pocket? No, he's not that type of guy. And then I understood he didn't really want to play Monopoly with me, but he wanted to have time with me. Because Monopoly is the game that takes the longest to bring out the winner. <laughs> and that's not really surprising for me. Because when I had his age, he's 10 now, my parents, they had a toy shop. And we were three boys. And for us, it was fantastic. The toy shop was on the ground floor, and we lived upstairs. Sometimes we had the impression to grow up in paradise. And as the eldest son, I regularly helped my father and my mother for special selling activities or when the new merchandise came in. And that was great. But the best of all was when on Sunday afternoon, when the shop was closed, we played and we tried out the new board games. That was real family time. And that was what happened around the world when the world closed down because of the COVID crisis. And I think, now when I see this box in front of me, good memories are coming up in me. And I think I'm not the only one in this room who feels like that. Because playing games means spending time together. Playing games means also no phone calls, diving into another world. Playing games is something for our children, very natural. They need to play games. They want to play games. And all the scientists all around the world, they tell us and they agree that playing games is essential for the child's development, for its cognitive development, for its social-emotional development, but also for its physical development. You may ask now, what is this guy talking about? Are they really fighting here in Luxembourg COVID with games? <laughs> Not from a biologist point of view, but certainly from a social emotional point of view. Because what we have in this box, it's hours and hours of quality time. What we find in this box, it's the motivation to play together with siblings, with parents, with friends, with grandparents. It's the motivation to 
pass time together, time to talk, time to laugh, time to feel happy, and time to feel disappointed or sad or even angry. But there's much more in this box. In this box, there are even hours and hours of reflecting and thinking, of problem solving, of analyzing, of developing strategies, strategies to win the game, of course. That's what in this box. Playing games was a valuable pastime during COVID period, but it's much, much more than that. Let's have a look at what's going to matter in tomorrow's world. Teamwork matters. Communication matters. Creativity matters. Analyze of, of, of complex situations. Yes, that matters. Problem solving matters. And why is that all so important to be creative? Why it is so important to know how to solve problems? Because these are skills that even the best computer does not possess. These are human skills, and they make us, as humans, most unique. And that especially in a digital world. Some human skills just can't be replaced by computers, harmonizing with other people, trusting each other, relying on each other, collaboration. I know what you're thinking now. Aren't computers really helpful when it comes to problem solving and analyzing complex situations? Yes, that's true, you're right. But the main question is, the essential question is, who is going to program the computer? And to program a computer, one of the key competences is just problem solving and analyzing of complex situations. That's what you need when you want to program a computer. But that's what we need all when we live in such a complex world that we are living today. So what we find in this box are all the key competences of the future. Every hour spending games is an hour well invested. Because spending games means understanding the rules, developing strategies, reflect the moves of your competitors, hide what you're up to, entering into new partnerships. All this makes us human unique in the digital world, and it prepares us, and it prepares our children to the future. Education is... Um, the art of giving the children the competences they need to choose their school career, to have later on prof uh, success in their professional life. But especially today, it comes to the ability to adapt themselves to the unexpected things in life. One year ago, one thing happened in all of our lives. It was unexpected, the COVID crisis. And we had to manage that, and it changed everything in our life. It changed our professional life, our social life, our private life. One thing I really loved in my job was to meet people, to meet people in meetings, to meet people on the street, in the supermarket, people that were very interesting and sometimes they made me change my mind. People that were disappointed and they wanted me to, to change the whole world in a minute. People that just couldn't stop uh, small talking. I love those moments when I met people. But from one day to another, those moments were no longer possible because all the meetings were digital. And of course, all the digital platforms they had their advantages. You can manage raised hands, you can switch off your camera. In one of the first meeting, digital meeting I had at the beginning of the crisis, one guy wanted to mute me. <laughs> and you must think that this is really something very special for a politician, to be muted. <laughs> All we need is the ability to adapt ourselves to different situations. And of course, 
we can't find this all in this box. And it's not enough to distribute such game boxes to all our schools and distribute the games to all our children. Modernizing an education system and bring it to the 21st century isn't finally not so easy like that. And when we, when we want to prepare our children to the future, let's take a look at what was um, impossible, possible for and, and necessary and, and normal for our generation or those generations before. Because digitalization does not change fundamental, fundamental pedagogical principles. Preparing children to tomorrow for doing that job, it needs two things. Giving children roots and giving them wings. Because when we dare, to, when we feel safe in a small community, when we trust each other, other persons and ourselves, then we dare to make new experiences. Then we, we want to, to reflect and and, and, and uh, search for, for new things. We want to discover the world. We want to understand the world. Our children need a good dose of this. They need it at home. They need it in their activities. They need it um, in, in care. They, they need it, uh, yes, they need it in school. Not only in school, but also in school. That's what's important when it comes to rethink education. And it's our duty. It's our duty as adults. It's our duty as adults to give our children those roots. Because when they have roots, they dare to spread their wings. We have to think, rethink education. For example, we need places to make new experiences. We have, for example, to make STEM courses more interesting. We have to bring science to life. We can do that in the classroom. We can do it also in the science center, but let's do it. We need rooms to be creative. Have you ever been in one of our maker spaces? This is a room in our secondary schools where students came in with an idea and they came out with an invention. We need innovation in daycare structures because education does not take place only in schools. It has to take place also after school and giving children and youngsters the opportunity to discover the world, discover their talents, discover their interests. We have and we need innovate in the school subjects. It's absolutely necessary nowadays to teach coding in primary school. But without screens, without tablets, without computers, in a playful way, adapted to their age. We have to teach digital skills and use digital devices and digital programs to teach. When I see my kids learning mathematics on a digital platform and having fun, learning mathematics and having fun, isn't that great? Then I understand that personalized learning tools are a real progress in education. We need to prepare the children to the risk of the digital world, making the difference between wrong and right. And that becomes more and more important in a world dominated by social media. And we need opportunities to discover and stimulate talents, and that's what we make in the small enterprises in schools or in other entrepreneurship initiatives. Children can awaken desires and learn to engage themselves. As I mentioned before, education is about giving roots and wings. And it's a lot about passion. The passion preparing little children to become strong individuals. The passion of learning and never stopping to grow. And this is what school is about, never stop learning. This is what education is about, never stop growing, because life never stops teaching. By distributing those game boxes 
to all the schools. We offered roots, and we also offered wings, and we offered a lot of passion. By distributing those game boxes to all our schools, we thought out of the box. <laughs> we did something completely new, and yet something very traditional. Thinking out of the box is part of this passion in education. Sometimes trying to look different ways to learn, different ways to adapt our schools to tomorrow. When the whole world has changed, our schools and their environment, they just can't stand still. And if in the 21st century, education wants to remain true to its values, then it must not hide in its box. Thank you.